Hi, my name is Ella Cornish, and in 2023, I sailed from this pontoon to this pontoon, but I took the long way round. This is a Spire 360. We turned right out of Foy Harbour and sailed in a clockwise direction, returning 49 days later. A Spire 360 is a major circumnavigation of the UK, sailing over 1,800 nautical miles and visiting amazing ports in the UK and Ireland with events and educational visits throughout. I sailed with a company called Morvar Sailing Project CIC, a youth development project based in Cornwall. Morvar means seahorse in Cornish, hence the lovely seahorse on the hull of their boat. So, uh, so yeah, my name's Matt. Um, I'm the skipper of Helen Mary Art and uh, the person that kind of runs with uh, Vicky, more of our sailing project. So this is um, Helen Mary R. She's a Bowman 57. She's a ketch, which means that she has two, two masts um, and she's a Bermudan ketch because she has two sails at the front as well. So we can fly five sails at once on the boat. She's 57 feet long. Um, she was built in 1985, so she's coming up to 40 years old. Um, and if you look back at her logbooks, at how much distance and what she's done, she's probably sailed about 100,000 miles and taken about 5,500 children sailing. So um, she's a good old girl. Um, she's been around the block a few times and looking a bit tired in places, but actually does really, really well and um, is just a, a great boat to sail. <laughs> So all I had left to do was pack and receive some wisdom from my parents before I left. Oh, you want to say something there? Yeah. Um, something, anything, what could I possibly say that would be so important? Um, monkeys fly backwards yeah, from the west. Yeah, think about the trip, darling. Oh, from the trip. So always have a great time and be excited and take in everything that you see. Okay. Be safe, always keep on. I'm feeling excited mm -hmm. for you, uh, slightly trepidatious, I'm going to miss you. Have a great time. <laughs> it's going to be great. I love you. <laughs> so as we were on our way to Foy, I was feeling a slight sense of not knowing what to expect and wondering what I had gotten myself into. We arrived in Foy and said some quick goodbyes, as we will be seeing each other later at the leaving party anyway. There she is. We then had a lot of work to do to get Helen ready to sail, including putting away what felt like enough food to feed an entire city. Willow and I were put in charge of the tin locker, which meant labelling the tins and attempting to fit them all in. There is storage in pretty much every empty space in the boat, and this particular locker was under someone's bed. There is also storage under floorboards, in the seats, and in the walls. We got introduced to where we'd be sleeping for seven weeks, and this is my bunk. Then we had to prep dinner, which meant we all sat down for what we came to call a chop and chat. This gave us the chance to get to know each other. You're probably wondering who I sailed with at this point, so here they are. But before I introduce the people, I'll introduce a few boat terms to you as you will hear these a lot over the next seven weeks of my life. Left and right don't exist on the boat, only port and starboard, port being left and starboard being right. The back of the boat is called the stern and the front the bow. Helen has two masts called the main and the mizzen and four sails, the foresail, the staysail, the main and the mizzen. So let's start on deck, shall we, for a whistle-stop tour. This is the stern, which is the back of the boat, where the helm is located, and then we enter the cockpit where most of my time is spent when sailing. Then, as you move towards the bow, you have the main mast and the granny bars, which help to keep you safe. We move forward to the bow, and we see the sail locker and the anchor locker, and we've reached the end of our above deck tour. Let's head down below. You enter through the companionway and see a nav desk to your left and the galley to your right. The afterguard cabin is just behind us, but I'm not allowed in there yet. Then, we move into the upper saloon, then the lower saloon, past the heads, and into the forepeak. In our crew, there was one skipper, one mate, five afterguard, and seven crew, ranging from ages 14 to 17. Pleasure to announce that. Oh my 
doesn't say it, my face will. No. <laughs> I'm like a <laughs> Can I do something because I want to video? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So what's like the food like in Turkey then? Nice. There is so delicious food in Turkey. Oh. Oh. Yeah. What's like the traditional dish? Right, we should have a traditional Turkish meal one night. Yes, yeah, sure. we do. Yeah, you need to decide sure. what we do. Sure. So now it was time for the leaving party at Royal Foy Yacht Club. So we tendered over. I didn't get much footage of the leaving party as it was just me saying goodbye. Thanks so much to Royal Foy Yacht Club for hosting us and for the lovely canapes. It was then time to tender back to Helen as we were leaving the next day for Nayland in South Wales and we still had washing up to do. Oh, is that what I look like? <laughs> is that what I look like? Oh, Why do I even look Great. like that? Great. <laughs> <laughs> it was then time for bed. Good night, guys. Good night. We woke up the next morning in a very interesting way. And then it was time to get ship shape. Matt was keen for us to attach some sails. I've seen asthmatic ants move faster than you got. So we were off on our first leg from Foy to Nayland in South Wales. This would be the first leg of a life-changing adventure. shift since four o'clock this morning but we've got to watch the sunrise as you can see um, and then I was sick I guinea pigged as we call it I'm so worried I'm gonna feel sick when we go down below in which case I guess I'll just go to sleep but... <gasps> We got into Nayland at about midday and cooked lunch, did a bit of tidying, then cooked dinner. And after some madness before bedtime... Four days, four months. It's four. <laughs> four months. Taco means four. <laughs> That's the number you're feeling. Yeah. It was time to bed down for the night as we would get yet another interesting awakening in the morning. 
We were going to explore the town that day, and while others were getting ready, the random skills I learnt in 2018 came in handy, and the boat band was underway. It was time to explore Nayland. This is our first time offshore. We're going to Cork. I'm attempting to do a Welsh accent, but I think it's failing. Starboard watch were making dinner, so it gave me a chance to get the best seat in the house, relax for a bit, and mull over the first leg of a Spy 360. I had enjoyed it so far, and I felt very lucky that we all got on so well as a crew, and our first time offshore together had been lovely. It felt like I'd known them for years. The next morning, it was time to leave for Carnarfon. So you may be wondering how it works when we are sailing for long hours and we need to sleep and eat and sail when we can't get to shore. The solution to this is watches. And the way watches work on Helen were four hours on where you would helm, change sails, cook, do the log and just generally be awake. Then you would have four hours off where you would sleep. There are also two two-hour watches once a day called dog watches, which allow you to be doing different watches each day. For example, if you were on a midnight until 4am watch one day, then thanks to the dog watch you would be on a 4am until 8am watch the next day. The watches were decided by which side of the boat you slept on, so I was in port watch. On passage from Nayland where we stayed last couple of days to Carnarvon, which is like the north of Wales. Left at about, must be half seven. And then we were on watch from eight till twelve. And then we were off watch from twelve till four. I think I've got my sea legs now because I can be below deck and not feel ill. We did get pretty close to Carnarfon that night, but due to depth in the area and it being dark, we decided to anchor close by and then get there in the morning. I, however, was asleep when we decided this, so I woke up and was shocked but pleasantly surprised with the beautiful views. This would be my first taste of the mountains to come. We helped pull up the anchor, kind of. <laughs> and then we were in Carnarfon. Straight away, we got to the important stuff. Brownies are done. And after a bit of chemistry revision in a very cramped bed in the four peak, it was time for us to go out. I was very excited to see Carnarfon for the first time, and it did not disappoint. A beautiful town, and now we were a more established crew, it was another great chance to get to know more about each other. The boat band was building, but we were tired after a long day. I used to play my ololo banjo, umbrella lested all along my nilly lily lily lily. But now now the fiddlings are brololo can sololo. It's not alone more you lose to me lily lily lily. I till a look at till a look at a metal and a shololock to see me what he lily could. After a quick bite to eat. Thank you later. Bacon. Bacon. It was time for some more exploring. <gasps> yes, if we all put a silly hat on and get a photo in the mirror. <laughs> the banjo song was coming along nicely, but it needed some accompaniment. To be, to be. It's literally a 541. Then it was time for the great pie competition. Yeah, but like basically like it's between the watches, so it's like a competition. It was getting tense already, and we were only early on in preparations. Starboard pie is going to be the best. Ignore Ella; she's lying. We had our predictions. And I'm telling you, at the end of the game, they'll say, oh, it's too cool, cool, we can so, choose Oh, I the, guarantee you. I'll say that. Put... But mostly, we had laser focus the entire time. 
Can you tell that's an R? I think we need to do two totally different ones. Who knows who's going to win? Three minutes left. Oh, oh my someone God. open it? Careful, okay, not burn yourself. Okay, I think we need to take <laughs> the treasure. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my God. God. Got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. The moment we had been waiting for had finally come. We held our breath. There is a boat, obviously. Yes. That's our boat. Yes. So oh, it's only really got one mast. But, but it's got love it. in it. So there is Daddy Pig. I don't know how we did it. Is <laughs> this is Patrick from SpongeBob. I'm going 10 out of 10. Oh, wow. yeah. After our pies were explained, it was time for the verdict. It's me. It's got veg in it. Great pleasure. <laughs> Both of them are equal. This fart in public. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I was thinking about someone else there. No, yeah. no sorry. It gives me great pleasure to announce that in this oh pilot competition, <laughs> <The suspense. laughs> I have to award. <laughs> 10 out of 10 to you guys. I'm telling you, it's the end of the game, they all say, oh, it's too cool. So it's a draw. I cannot go higher than 10 out of 10. We will have to have a final tie next break. week. Oh. <laughs> the tiebreaker oh. of the Great Morvar Bake Off. I shall also think of a theme yeah. for the final pilot. We went to bed that night with the excitement that the first week-long chapter of the Spy 360 was complete. The next morning we would wake up and sail to Belfast, but not without some breakfast made by yours truly. Thank you for sticking with me as you relive my journey. I assure you the next chapter has even more excitement, adventure and cracking sailing than before as we sail across Ireland.